The important thing to know about me is I'm not 100% comfortable talking about sex and sexual wellness products. So if you're sitting out there and you're thinking, that is me, I'm a little uncomfortable here, that's fine. I'm with you. You're not alone. I'm here to be weird and uncomfortable and ask the questions and learn things. So I've got you. But if you are an expert, you're thinking, I could give the Sex and the City ladies a run for their money. You are in amazing company because we have a panel here of experts that really, really know their stuff. So I'm going to introduce all of them. You can start by saying that I'm the one that's making you most uncomfortable with the word <laughs> vagina. <laughs> but we're getting better. <laughs> we are getting better. I am learning so much from Sarah Gold. Sarah started and has run five businesses over the past 30 years. She personally searched for a product that would help with the dryness that she was experiencing as a middle-aged woman. When she didn't find anything that met her high standards, she created Beloved. Next, we have Dr. Megan Fleming. Say hello. Dr. Megan is a clinical psychologist and nationally recognized sex and relationship expert. Dr. Megan has over 20 years of experience working with individuals and couples to discover what's holding them back from getting the sex and relationships that they want. Known for her practical advice and easy to follow guidance, Dr. Megan is also a sought after speaker and media expert. As you can see, that's why we sought her for this panel. That's right. How many times have you said vagina today? <laughs> I'm going out of order of the way that they're sitting here because this is the way that my presentation is. Um, next, we have Laura Henny from The Rack Shack. Give a little wave. Laura's dream was always to own a company of her own when she discovered that even in a cosmopolitan city like New York, it was difficult to find attractive bras for larger cup sizes, and thus the Rack Shack was born. Located in Brooklyn, New York, the Rack Shack aims to empower customers of all shapes, colors, and genders. Welcome, Laura. <laughs> And not to confuse you, but we also have another Laura. Ooh, did I go out of order? I skipped. We have Laura and Anna from Oh Baby Lingerie. Oh Baby is now in its 18th year, located in Portland, Oregon, known for their impeccable customer service and welcoming atmosphere. Owner Laura Fitzpatrick opened Oh Baby after a long career in finance and management. She brings to Oh Baby creative business and marketing knowledge and a fanatic love of lingerie. Manager Anna Jones has worked in the industry for 20 years and brings extensive knowledge and expertise in bra fitting, brands, and trends. Welcome, guys. And no, your eyes do not deceive you. We have another panelist who will only be here digitally. She's not here with us today. Um, Katie is the host of A Certain Age, a podcast that shines an age-positive spotlight on midlife and shares the smarts and sparkle of women ages over 50. All righty, give our panelists a warm welcome. We are going to get started. A part of the health and wellness wave that is sweeping the nation, women's sexual wellness is breaking through the stigmas and barri barriers that have defined it in the past to, be, to become a discussable topic and a growing part of the luxury market for specialty stores and major retailers alike. When you walked in, you should have gotten a little worksheet. It looks like this. If you don't have one now, give me a yell. You don't have one? Okay. That may be more than two, but you can pass it around. Um, if you need some pens, I've got some as well. OK, great. So this is a little worksheet that goes along with our presentation. We wanted you to walk away with an actionable plan to either start up your sexual wellness business or really take it to the next level. So you'll gain some insight on the potential of sexual wellness and health products in your store, how to discuss this with your customers and your associates, and get some tools to really boost your knowledge and retail success within those categories. So keep those worksheets handy. That's a nice little picture of it if you don't have it. Alrighty, so Dr. Megan is gonna start us off. Well, what does sexual wellness even mean? And what changes have we seen in bringing this topic and these products more into the mainstream conversation? 
Well, I love this question because I think the fact that we've added sexual wellness to the wellness conversation, um, I think, you know, these days there's so much about health, well-being, um, but sex has really been excluded. And as we know in our culture, there's often so much taboo talking about it. And so ultimately sexual wellness is sort of that mind-body connection that enables uh, anyone to explore and enjoy what gives pleasure in their body. And that um, we sort of have a thing in our culture about the apple a day. I'm like, really, it's the orgasm a day because the science is clear. It's oxytocin, it's dopamine, there's amazing health benefits. And I think that, you know, there are definitely age, normal age related changes to our sexual health and functioning and giving women the knowledge and the tools to know that they can be sexual into their 80s, into their 90s. In fact, STDs are highest going up in the geriatric population. <laughs> which a lot of people don't know. And so, um, you know, there's always often, I think, around sexuality and ageism in a sense of, like, sex is for the young and recognizing that feeling pleasure in your body and helping women to know and own their own pleasure is really my passion. Um, and, again, giving them products like Beloved so that I sort of say it's tools in a toolbox, that they have many different ways to sort of experience play and pleasure on their own and ideally knowing on your own so that you then can communicate it to your partner or partners. Um, but I think really empowering women to, you know, in my mind, sexuality and sexual wellness is really about vitality and um, that sense of aliveness that we're really connected to ourselves in a very holistic way. And how do you see that coming into the mainstream conversation? We have some examples of some articles that you might recognize. Dr. Megan, how is this becoming more mainstream? Well, I think part of the mainstream is that we're starting to see, like the podcast and Brooke Shields and other, um, you know, Gwyneth Paltrow with Goop, we're seeing you know, women that are in the perimenopausal, menopausal age that are really sex positive and recognizing that, again, we're creating part of the conversation. I think sex conversations really started in the 90s around Viagra and uh, when the PD-5 inhibitors were initially introduced, um, where all of a sudden men started having conversations around sex. And so, but I think what we're seeing now is finally women or Volvo owners are really getting their opportunity to um, be loud and proud, right, about their own sexual health, wellness, and what gives them pleasure. And that we're seeing media starting to, you know, pick up on those stories and share and tell those stories. And my feeling is also creating the conversations because women don't often have a space to have these conversations. And so that's why, like, in a small boutique or shop where – you know, there's a relationship there. It's a perfect opportunity to ask about, you know, or introduce them, right? That there are opportunities. There's always great, but there, there's always, there's more. <laughs> yeah. We're going to hear from Katie next. Her job is to have these conversations. These are a few of the major retailers. <laughs> She's not here yet. She's coming. <laughs> Um, and this is also part of this, the continuing uh, creation of this new culture that talks about sex. Can you guys hear her okay? Okay. Is there somebody? I don't know that I have the remote here. They took it from me. Anybody in the house? From Curve. Thank you. You're amazing. There are more videos. I just want to make sure that you guys can hear her. In the meantime, this is a little bit of an overview of the customer that Katie was talking about. They have over $1 trillion worth of purchasing power. This comes from the U.S. Government Consumer Expenditure Survey and from Nielsen. That's a lot of purchasing power, guys. $1 trillion. Okay, we have another video that we were going to play. Let me see if there is. 
there some volume on your side? Maybe, and I was trying to see, because I don't have control over my computer anymore. It's not, the computer is controlling it now. The easiest workaround is just to have your, your mic like next to your All right, we're going to try it. Engage consumers. They are shopping. Okay, I'm going to try to summarize for you. She has an educated, affluent customer that really likes shopping at stores that support um, them as women. Here's a little quote. Um, this article from Bloomberg says this customer is the wealthiest, healthiest, most active generation. Only 5% of advertising dollars are actually directed to her. I get chills thinking about how much money this woman has and no brands are speaking to her. And we have some reports from the sexual wellness market uh, global outlook and forecast from 2021 to 2026. The U.S. sexual wellness market reached 33 billion in 2021, but it's expected to hit 45 billion by 2026. So there is definitely potential in this market. Anna and Laura, what is the potential of adding or growing a sexual wellness category in your store? And what has been your experience carrying these types of products? Hey, I was going to tell you the story about how we started. So 18 years ago, when I got my first lease for Oh Baby, we were carrying sexual wellness products. Basically, they were toys. And everybody wanted them in the back room, behind a closed door, really can't talk about it. If somebody finds it, great, but otherwise it's not really there. The second lease, my landlord actually made me say I wouldn't put them out front, that I would only have them in the back room. And unfortunately for the man, fortunately for me, he died. And <laughs> <laughs> almost immediately. <laughs> and I put everything in the window. <laughs> you know, like I just moved it out front. And so we have actually always been very, very, very involved in this uh, sexual wellness movement, even though I didn't know that's what it was called at the time. Now it's really wonderful because as an older woman, I see a lot of women my age. I'm almost 70. And I see a lot of women my age who have been, of course, exploring themselves and, of course, enjoying all of this privately, very, very privately. And now everybody's out talking about it. They come in the store and they play with the toys and they, they we ask us questions and tell us stories and it's amazing how public it is now. So the bottom line is it is the bottom line and that I think is what I can speak to. Uh, we have always sold these products and each and every year we sell more. Uh, sometimes when we let them go because we've got bridal business to you know bring in and we don't have enough and then we see it like we really see it if we don't have enough to sell so that's our little display right out in front always mm -hmm. and I think that's just where we're at right now and I'm sorry for the 18 years I had to struggle to get it out there <laughs> but, but we did and I feel really good about it now really good about it yeah. Wow, you've seen some incredible changes yeah, in amazing. this category. That's amazing. <laughs> Laura, what about you? What was the potential here, and what has been your experience carrying these types of products in your store? Well, for me, it was kind of the opposite. I was never really planning to uh, carry sexual wellness products, but I have been always very sex positive. Um, and like my main thing was at first I wanted to like have 
beautiful bras for all bodies. And then I had questions like, oh, are you sex positive or are you queer friendly? And I was like, yeah, duh. But like people <laughs> were like, oh no, you have to like, you know, be more like vocal about it because it is not as normal. And since I've been doing that, like I have so much, many more customers that come from me because of the sex positive and because um, I don't make a big deal out of it. And I think, so my customer is actually quite young. But the fun thing that I've noticed is that my customers bring their moms in because they want to empower their moms. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh my God, you have to come to the Rock Shack. I've had such a good experience. You know, you, you know, you need these beautiful bras too. And like they have these lubes and they have these products and you can do it too. So it's really people get now very excited and want to talk about it. And um yeah, that, I think it's a beautiful thing to see. And then on top of that, I have a lot of like sex workers that come to me um, who have a lot of money too to spend actually on sexual wellness products and um, lingerie. And I've actually learned a lot from them as well. And I love them as customers. They're yeah, amazing. So um, yeah, I think, I mean, of course, my store is in Brooklyn, which people are a lot more comfortable to talk about sex and sexuality and all that. So, um, but I love that like people want to spread that around over all generations. And uh, yeah, that's amazing. So we have an audience full of lingerie buyers and store owners. Sarah, why is this specifically a category for lingerie stores? Well, it's a perfect adjacency to what you all are already selling, and it's a perfect adjacency to the relationships that you already have with your customers. So you're in the fitting rooms, you're touching their breasts, you're fitting them for bras, you're selling them thong panties, sometimes you're selling them much less than that for <laughs> other purposes, um, but like this is the next the next step in that relationship. If they can't talk with you about sexual wellness kinds of products, like who can they talk with? And here's the thing, your customers are buying these things. They're buying them already. They should be buying them from you. And you, again, are the most comfortable relationship that they have when it comes to these types of products. So if you're not offering them, they're going to be buying them from someone else. But if you are offering them, it's a total natural fit for them to be buying them from you. That's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to pretend that I'm a buyer and you now have me convinced to add this category to my store. What should I be looking for in brands in how I'm considering for my store and that they match my customer? I know this is a big one, so everybody is going to answer this. Oh, I missed this quote from Oh Baby. Okay, so this is also on your worksheet. So if anybody says anything that, you know, sparks an idea of, yes, this is what I want to carry for my store, you can just check that off on this section of your worksheet. We are going to start with a video from Katie. Um, I know we're having some sound issues with these videos. You're going to get these presentations later, so you will have it. There will be a recording up from Curve. If you've RSVP'd, you'll get sent this email. There's a QR code on all of your worksheets. So if you go straight to that QR code, the recording and this presentation will be posted. So I promise you will get all the information and all the tools you need. If you happen to miss something today, we will get it to you. And the presentation's already up on that website. Oh, perfect. It should already be there. that allow us to feel fully seen and, and realized and treated by grown-ups. And we want you to understand that we are vibrant women uh, who are still not out of the park, still having great sex, still looking to be active and fit, and we want to support brands that see us that way. When you talk to a woman of a certain age uh, in these ways, you will win her brand loyalty. She will enjoy being part of your retail mix entering your stores, getting on your website, because she knows that um, you see her and you're not diminishing her. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> Anna and Laura, how about you? What should I be looking for in the brands? I know you're very, very specific about the toys that you stock. What are your requirements? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> First, I wanted to say one thing, though. Yeah. All of this is 
perfectly wonderful and true. And we want to create relationships with our customers, and that is a huge part of why we do what we do. But we want to make money. <laughs> yes. And so giving up a portion of your precious buying, you know, selling space is, is a hard thing to do. I mean, we, we take up a lot of room with the with these products, but we have $85 pickup items. You know, you, you're doing like $20 pickup items at your register. We're doing $85 pickup items, the, you know, little things that people go, oh, I want that, and they walk away with it. So it, it, is, it is really a lucrative piece of your business if you can carve out, you know, a space for it. I know it's hard. We have a tiny little shop. So what we look for are things that people can't necessarily get online quickly enough, uh, things that are really pretty, design-centric, that appeal to women mostly, although we have a lot of um, male customers as well. Um, we want them to be quiet. <laughs> we want them to be travel-friendly. We want them, each of the things that we pick has a different function. So we don't have like three choices in this category, or we don't have three choices in lubes. We don't have three choices. We have, you know, we have very limited choices, but what we have are things that we have tried and we know are right. But yes, give up a little space and sell this stuff. <laughs> All of it, you know, the products that you're creating, as well as things that are out there in the market. <laughs> Probably right now only about five, five or six. Yeah, there's no, there's choices, but each product choice is there's one of theirs or three of theirs or two of these, you know. But there aren't there aren't a million. We don't want to confuse you because you know that happens too. You give somebody too many choices, it's too, it's overwhelming. But you do need to carve out a little space because you can't keep it in the back room like we used to do. <laughs> you know, you have to have it out there. And you have, you have to, people have to be able to touch and feel and, you know, see how slippery things are and they want yeah, samples. Anytime you can get samples from anybody, samples are great. They take something home with them, they come back the next day for, for it. We don't do a lot of bath products because there are other places on the street that do that so we try to really hone in on sex i mean we really do that's the that's the point right awesome <laughs> laura how about you what should i be looking for um in these products i know that you personally try out a lot of these so you can give that feedback to your customer what are you looking for <laughs> Well, yes, but also too, um, I I do the same thing. I don't have a million um, choices in one product, but the plus side on that is as well is that you can real you believe in the product. That's why you sell it. So if you have one lube, you can say like, oh, I like this lube. That's why, like, because X, Y, and Z, and that's why I only sell this lube, for example. You know, um, and um, yeah, I look for product like I want it to be like women like preferably women owned women developed and also for women or for like not i mean just not for men basically you know or to, for couples we, <laughs> yeah or for we couples. do couples yeah. you know a lot of yeah. things that can you know yeah well and um i like it to be a little chic right so um you would not see a gigantic dick dildo in my store <laughs> so like i have the vespa for example which is like a really beautiful necklace uh, vibrator um the 85 dollar pickup item yes <laughs> that is 85 dollar pickup item um and uh, like the thing is is like you know even though i am very comfortable talking about sex and i'm very sex positive i personally don't really like to go to sex stores because mm -hmm. and, like they're generally pretty sleazy uh, it's getting better because there are now sex stores that are like geared towards women and queer people and not so much towards just cis men. Um, but it's still hard to find them. Uh, so if you can like shop in like a safe space and um, you know at the same time why I also don't have gigantic dildos is because I have a lot of like moms with teenagers shopping with me and I don't want to scare them away you know so um, like I do select the products a little bit like you don't specifically always see right away like this is sex sex so um, yeah 
I select them specifically on like also friendliness, classiness, um, discreetness, and like of course it has to be an amazing product. Those are great points. I like being classy. I'd much rather walk into one of your stores too. <laughs> Dr. Megan, I know you have a different perspective on this. What are your clients asking you for in these products? Well, I think they're very concerned about what they're putting on and in their bodies so that they're all natural ingredients and um, sort of where they're sourced from and recognizing specifically things like, you know, parabens, you know, parabens can be endocrine disruptors uh, or glycerin, which can promote yeast, which can be problematic for people who are more challenged by yeast infections. Um, so really looking and also you know, the multi-purpose of a product, that the serum can be used sort of as both a lubricant and a vaginal moisturizer. Um, and, you know, it, we've already spoken to it, the fact that it can be discreet, it's easy to travel with, um, and that, you know, it just gives them so many options and that it can be right at the bedside mm -hmm. and they're not thinking about if the cleaning person's going to see it, right? Like, again, the discreet piece. Um, so that it's really accessible and easy to use, but also it's um, the, the quality of the ingredients. Yeah, quality is everything. Sarah, from the brand perspective, what do you see your customers asking for? What do you specifically put into your brand? Well, I think, um, I think you have to make sure that it's safe, number one. You don't want to be selling something that's not safe. And a lot of this stuff is unregulated. Sex toys are completely unregulated. So that's one area where you have to do your homework and buy from really established brands that have put in the R&D to make sure that their products are safe. Um, from a lubricant perspective, lubes are actually considered a class two medical device by the FDA. So any lube that you carry, make sure that it is approved by the FDA. There's a lot of lubes on the market right now that are not approved by the FDA that are being sold illegally. So this is a product that women are putting in their bodies, so you really do want to make sure that it's safe and cleared by the FDA. The other thing to look for is look for brands that are going to collaborate with you. Look for brands that are going to support you, that they're going to train your people, they're going to provide marketing support, they're going to help you to have events and launch the products that look... Samples, yep. <laughs> Social media posts, all of those kinds of things. So really look for brands that are going to support you. And you said it best, look for brands where you can make money. I mean, it's really hard to make money when you're selling a 10 or a $15 product. I mean, all of the beautiful lingerie here is in a multiple range of price points. And you all know what what works for your store and where you can make money. It's the same kind of thing in this particular category. Look for products where you can make money. And the last thing is, look for products that are a good fit with your customer. You know who your customer is. Who are your very best customers? Or who are those customers that you want to bring in? Be very, very clear about who your target market is and what kind of products she would want to buy. There's a wide range of products that are out there and available. Some of them your customers will love. Some of them they might be scared of. Some of them they might be repulsed by. So just make sure that you know who your customer is and you're matching your products to that particular customer. Those are all really important tips. I feel like I know how to select my brands and my products now. So I've got my products and it's time to start selling. How do I make sure that my team is prepared to sell these products? Anna and Laura, I know that you, we have discussed some research and the education process with your associates. Tell us what that is like. So we definitely make sure that we have very knowledgeable associates and employees. We want to make sure that everybody feels like they've got talking points, that they can have a very intimate conversation with people with, about sexual wellness and the toys. And it's not always the most comfortable conversation for people. So we just really want to make sure that we have lots of background information on the product that we're selling. And I think it's really important for our staff to try the products out themselves. So we make sure that everybody, maybe not everyone on the staff has tried every product, but that somebody has tried the actual toy or the lube, and, um, and then we share the information with each other, and that's a really easy way to have a conversation with your customers because you're coming from a background of experience, and I think that that's really important to be able to relate, like, yes, I want this. You have that conversation. Is this something that you're looking for? And, you know, I always say this might be too much information for you, but this is what I like about this toy. So I think it's really important that you do your due diligence and try the products. Sarah, what can you add to that? How do I make sure my team is prepared to sell these products? Well, a lot of it comes down to education and training. 
So making sure that you have a process in place to educate your team, to train them, and then really it's exposure. They just need time in the saddle to get comfortable with selling these kinds of products. And sometimes the best way to do that is to practice that. So have the team ask each other questions, have them quiz each other, you ask them questions, have those conversations and almost role play what those will sound like. Because again, the first time you say vagina in a business <laughs> environment, it's very different than the hundredth time that you say it. So as your customer, or as your um, associates get more comfortable with it, that comfort will also translate to customer conversations. But that does not happen in one day. It doesn't happen in a one-hour training. It has to be repeated exposure. And that goes hand-in-hand -hand with your marketing, too. And as your team is seeing your marketing and they're seeing your social media posts about these kinds of products, they will get more comfortable with it, too. So it really is exposure and being really clear about what kind of training program that you can put together for them. And look to your brands like... At Beloved, we're very serious about providing support in terms of training and marketing to our stores. So look to your brands to help you with that as well. I can vouch for the exposure part of that answer. <laughs> I feel like how I feel now and when we started with Beloved um, at the beginning of this year is completely different. So I do think, you know, those tiny things on a daily basis, the small things is really what helps people make, make people feel comfortable. But Dr. Megan... If I do feel awkward about this, how do you kind of take that weirdness out of this topic, not only with the staff, but with the customers as well? Well, I think in part it's to recognize when you don't have the conversation that you're not giving them access to something that really can improve their quality of life, their sexual wellness. And so when you realize that by not having the conversation, right, that the cost essentially to the client. And so... Um, Again, the exposure thing has been said, so role play. Like I think the more you have these conversations, it just begins to flow. And I could say that almost ubiquitously, it's like an exhale. Like People really want this information. They don't have many places they, they can go or where they feel like they have a relationship or they feel the safety. Um, and so you know, it, it can often start of something as simple as, you know, often women are telling me that they, you know, they just have an idea that their sex lives could be better. Have you ever felt that way? Right? It's a really just, we can think about them as sentence stems or different like open-ended questions that you can just sort of Put it into the space and give it's a very respectful way they're gonna be like oh my god yes and you know really can't wait to hear more about what you have to offer or they might be like not now i'm really going through a lot you know this isn't but they if it isn't now a good time for that conversation they were going to remember who brought it up with them and when they are feeling ready they're going to come back because I can tell you, even amongst GYNs, they're not always having the sexual health conversations because they're busy and they're just focusing on the dysfunction, right? And not necessarily on the wellness and health. And so it really is a huge opportunity um, and a benefit that we're offering by beginning and having these conversations. Can I add something to that? Of course. So if you think about these types of products, let's just say lube, because that's my area of expertise. Your customers are buying lube already. Is she going into Target and having like the neighbor teenage kid check her out? Eh, no, that she doesn't want to do that. Is she going into a sex shop where she feels intimidated by a lot of the other products in there? She probably doesn't want to do that either. If you think about it, your shops are the perfect place for her to be buying these things. You have that relationship. You have that openness. She walks in the door and feels comfortable. It's a, you know, a, a space where she already has that level of comfort. And you and your team add to that level of comfort. So if you think about it, she doesn't want to be buying these products anywhere else. You all are the ones that can take the awkwardness out of it. And like Dr. Megan said, it's almost uh, I, like since getting into this business myself, I mean, I never thought I'd be selling lube. Um, but after getting into this business myself, I sort of feel like it is almost my responsibility to make this available to women because we just haven't had this available to us. I was talking to someone yesterday and we were talking about, I just turned 50. We were talking about when we were younger, we didn't even talk about getting our periods. Like, ooh, shame, right? And we've come so far and you guys have come so far in 18 years, but we are at this point where there's a large conversation happening about this and I feel so passionately that you all have the door to open for so many women to give them the opportunity to really fully express themselves fully in this way and for you all to make money while doing it. Yeah, amazing. So once we are all ready, how do we introduce these products to the customer, Anna and Laura? What are different methods for in-store and online efforts? So we... As Laura spoke of, we are really 
um, forward with our toys. We have it very accessible. We want people to be able to touch the samples, to turn on the toys, to ask the questions. So we just make sure that it's all out there, ready and available. We also have collateral from the brands. People can pick up a pamphlet or, or a postcard and they can take it home with them. They can do their research by themselves if they're not comfortable asking us questions. Uh, we also have samples. And samples are really nice because people can take it and 90% of them come back and end up purchasing the product. So we're really um, just put it all out there, let people touch and play and have a good time with it. Um, we definitely use social media. Uh, Instagram is an amazing platform, obviously. So I think your comfort level really, really helps your customers feel comfortable Speaking about it, it's not always like, you know, comfortable for people. So we just want to make sure that we have a very like open and inclusive environment for people to ask questions. And we talk to our reps a lot. Reps help us immensely. Mm -hmm. So take that information. We deal directly with uh, the companies usually, as opposed to working through one of the mediaries who like provides everything. So we're able to have a relationship with the company, and they can send us whatever it is we need. Um, it's just easier to have that. But not everybody can do that. Um, we just have so few that we can, we can do that, so it works. And one other thing just to add to what we were, you were talking about, um, we have gynecologists that recommend our store to their uh, patients. Yeah. And... And they come in and they say, my doctor told me to come here. And it's really interesting. Yeah. So there's education that you could be doing uh, uh, to the medical world because they don't always know what to tell their, you know, maybe there's nothing wrong. Maybe they just need, you know, beloved. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I think that it's really important if you've got a sexual wellness person in your store as a customer or a gynecologist, give them cards. Mm -hmm because they will pass them out and you will see a return, 100%. Yeah, those collaborations are really important. And to other people who work with women intimately, hairdressers is another, you know, mm. you sit in the chair for two hours, you talk to your hairdresser, the hairdresser talks to you, you talk about sex. <laughs> yeah, those are all great ideas. Laura, how about you? How do you introduce these to your customer? Um, yeah, I have them by my register most of the time. So people just also ask me, like, what is this? And then I'm like, well, that's lube, or that's a vibrator. And then you start talking about them, you know. Um, and if people are, like, if people come, I always ask my customer if um, they're for bra fitting, like, oh, is this for sexy time? Is this for, like, day-to-day -day wear, whatever. If it's for sexy time, then it's also a fun opening, like, oh, I also have this product, you might like this or that, or you should try this out. Um, so that is kind of like how I do it. But yeah, also have it, keeping it very, very like casual and relaxed, I feel is, helps a lot. Um, because then people feel comfortable just talking. Totally. Themselves. Feeling comfortable. <laughs> yeah. That's what you need for this. Yeah. Sarah, quickly, what about you? Um, what are different methods for introducing these online and in stores? Well, I would look at, first and foremost, how you best communicate with your people. Are you really connected with your audience on social media? Are you doing a lot of in-store merchandising? Do you have an email newsletter? So what's already working? And then really treating this like a launch and treating it like a campaign. Especially if you're introducing new products or a whole new category, really give it the attention that it deserves. Because here's the thing, your customers are seeing all sorts of other messages throughout their day that you have to break through. So you might have to do all of the things so that they have the repeated exposure to know that you have that. And they they might not buy it from you today, but when you keep talking about it, they're going to know that you have those types of products. And when they're ready to buy, again, you have that place that they want to go to. Um, so I think it's just really treating it like a campaign and making sure that you're saying these things and communicating these things over and over. And just as a good maxima rule of marketing is really communicate to the customers that you understand what their problem is. 
So if you can use the language and say things about, you know, wanting to spice up your love life, or are you feeling drier than you normally have been in the past? Are you, as you're aging, is your body changing? I mean, say those things in your marketing, because when you say those things, then people are like, she gets me. Like, they understand me. And when it's time for them to purchase those products, they're, of course, going to come to you. They're not going to buy them online. They're not going to go to Target or Walgreens or another place to buy them. They're absolutely going to go to you. Just also, can we often think about the you know the natural normal role of aging, but also medications? You know the antidepressants, the SSRIs in particular have <laughs> antibiotics. Yeah, I'm like so the anticholinergic going on. The antihistamines they don't just dry up your snot, right? Like they, they, they the mucus <laughs> they dry up everything. Um, so I think if we just sort of normalize the recognition that um, th again throughout the lifespan there are many reasons at different points in a female in the menstrual cycle where there can be more vaginal dryness. So again, it's really giving people, again, more resources. Um, and they're usually just so really grateful because, you know, they don't necessarily know that there's these kinds of options or that these medications have these side effects because that's not often what's part of the communication when they're getting prescribed. Yeah. And there's Sorry, we're not going to take this over, I promise. <laughs> and there's there's some, you know, some shame around that as a woman. If you're like, oh, I'm feeling dry or I'm not, it, it's like akin to erectile dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And now we have this beautiful thing called Viagra that none of us are scared to talk about, right? Like it, that has been very normalized. This is the woman's version of that when it comes to drops in estrogen or medication or whatever, um, wh whether you're in your cycle, whatever it is that causes vaginal dryness. But talking about it and normalizing the conversation, again, none of us would would blink twice about talking about Viagra. But this is the version of that for women. And again, I think it's all of our jobs and service to each other and to humanity and women to really have these conversations and talk about this because it's 100% normal. And 100% there are solutions to help. Yeah. I know you've got a lot more in you. You all have such amazing tips and expertise. But I do want to make sure that we have some time to take questions from the audience. We do have a list of resources that's on the presentation. Again, there's this QR code. We have a lot of different education materials. So again, you'll get this presentation. You can click on all of these and discover and find what really works for you. So if anybody has any questions, this is your time to tap into the expertise of our panelists. Yes in the back there. Okay, bad experiences. Have you had them? What do you do? No, not at all. You know, a mother with a little child, maybe, you know, picking something up and going, mommy, what's this? You know, and we used to call it mommy's bad toys. Or makeup, you know, if it is, if it is a, a, a bottle of something, oil or lube or something. So it's mommy's things. And no, that's about the only uncomfortable little thing that happens to us, I think. Otherwise, no. No. And I think a way you can go, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but not now. <laughs> People would run in and run out. <laughs> Well, and this comes down to selecting the right products for your customers, right? Who are your customers? Do they need something that's more discreet or are they more open about things? Really comes down to selecting the products that are best for your customer and how you merchandise them, right? How how people have access to seeing them in the stores. Um, do Are they able to test them out? I think you have to really, really know your customer, which you probably know very intimately, and and pick things that you know she would love and wouldn't wouldn't be outside of what she's comfortable with. And and if you start with some just just start with a few that feel really good and really comfortable, that's a, a very easy way for you and your staff and your customers to get eased into it. Like. I, I wouldn't recommend going out and buying a full line, like, you know, 40 different products. Start with a couple and gain comfort with those and start with ones that are really discreet and more elegant and more, uh, more luxurious. And simple. And simple. Yes. Yeah. Start simple and then you can always expand from there. Little feather duster things, you know, we've, we've used, they're up front. So if a person wants to go beyond that into something more elaborate, they can, but they can just walk away at the kind of the initial, like, oh, that's pretty, and then walk away. They don't want it, they don't have to have it. Yeah, it's a good way. Anybody else? We have time for one more. Yes. So, uh, 
Ben. They're like, you're the expert. Have this mic. There you go. <laughs> um, so we have actual mothers that buy their daughters toys uh, as they're going off to college. Um, it's a very healthy birthday. thing. 18th birthday, whatever it is, everyone should have one. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a conversation to have, not necessarily always your responsibility to have those questions, you know, have those conversations that might be between, you know, a mother and a daughter. Uh, so we're, we're pretty out there with it, as we keep on saying, sex positive. Uh, we're in Oregon. Yeah, we're in Portland, so. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Some of you may have challenges in your states even. Sorry. Um, you know, around, I don't know what kind of laws are still in place, but I know there have been some pretty archaic laws in some states sure. that you have to get around. You know, we allow people under 18 to come into our store. Mm -hmm. There are some places where you can't do that. So that's something to think about. <laughs> Well, and what I was saying, it's just like they're all discreet. Like I pick all my like products to be discreet so that you don't obviously see that it's a sexual product. But I also have, it's funny, the other day I had a teen and her mom in the store and the teen had like a heart tattoo and she was like, wanted everything super, super sexy, but her mom wanted everything to be like super, super conservative. So I was whispering with both of them because <laughs> the, like the teen was like, don't tell my mom that. Tattoo here, and, and, the, and the mom was like, "Coverage, coverage." So you know, like it's um, yeah. A lot of the time, like the teens know more than the moms, and you know, yeah, it's uh, it's just like finding sort of a discrete balance. Thank you. We've got one more here. Or yeah, or what specifically, what kind of events? How do you set those up? Where do you find those things? So we've noticed, um, we've tried to have, you know, parties and come and see our amazing toy selection, or we've got a new lube or whatever. We've found in a very interesting way that a lot of times people do not want to buy toys in front of each other. So, trial and error. So, we have kind of, like, stopped doing that so much. Um, we might run a, a little promotion over a weekend. People can come in at their leisure. Um, but we kind of curtailed yeah, the, the, to toy, the toy parties. Mm -hmm. so. But I like the idea of having a speaker, yeah. and then their things are there. Yeah, so we do have, um, I have all the panelists information on the next slide. So Dr. Megan is local here to New York if you want to set up something with her. But we also have... And I would also say, and it may not be up here, but ASECT is the American... Yes, it's up in the top right. I know the logo is kind of hard to see, but we that's a database of sex educators. So that you can there, and by state, they tell you who's qualified. Mm -hmm. So... ASECT is a great yeah. resource. And we have some programs up here, um, a whole reading list if like your customers want to talk about books and need to find something adjacent, some blog posts to help you get started, Katie's podcast. These can all kind of help you get some ideas of what might fit your store and spark something that would really help your customers along. I just have one more thing. Yeah. It's about 15% of what we do. Well, That's a pretty big portion of your business. So you could add 15% to what we do. Yeah. Added this category. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I actually want more. <laughs> like, I mean, I want more products. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and hopefully, we, yeah, we can do that for you guys, and yeah, you yeah. can take what you have and really grow it. Yeah. Um, so these, this is information here. Again, this will be on the presentation that you'll get, so you'll have everybody's information. Um, we're going to hang out here for a little bit if you have additional questions or anything for us. Um, as I said, you'll get this presentation uh, if you RSVP or scan that code. We do invite you to a champagne hour at the beloved booth C14 today from 4.30 to 5.30. Or you can stop by any time and see us. The, we'll just have the bubbly in the afternoon. Thank you again, panelists and Curve, everybody. We wish you success in this category. Thanks. Yay.